Well, I know he wouldn't want me to cry through this, so I'm going to try not to. I really am so incredibly grateful for everybody that's here right now and everybody that cycled through. Uh, thank you for being here to honor our father. Dad was always there for everyone when he could be. His family, his friends, his neighbors. His unconditional love and generosity would be remembered by all who knew him. And he would have been humbled by the strength our family has shown this last week. To not focus on what we have lost, but rather so many to share so many wonderful stories of an amazing person he was. In his early days, our father was a proud member of the Big Town Eagles football team. His face would light up every time he spoke of all the hard-fought contests that he and his teammates battled through. Whether home or away, he was always extremely proud to wear that jersey. Yet more so, whenever he would tell me these stories, I could always hear the pride in his voice when he talked about how exceptional of a player his little brother Randy was. And I can't speak to the adventures of his youth without mentioning car racing. He so loved the many times he got to travel with Uncle Jim Gwinnip and the team to so many places all over the years. He even laughed and smiled so much, reminiscing about those times. In his early 20s, our father tried to stay in a few different professions, from working at a state campground to running a garbage business with his best friend, Phil Berto. He wasn't afraid to try new things. But yet his true calling came when he discovered the taxi business. But more on that in a minute. In the spring of 1981, dad learned a new meaning to the word love. My brother, Timothy John was born. In the fall of 1985, he had a second son, me. But make no mistake, we may be his only biological offspring, but we are not his only children. While by definition he had a stepson, Lewis, and a stepdaughter, Kelly, they were his son and daughter in every sense of the word. This led the way to another chapter in our father's life that he cherished in his heart his entire life. We lived in California. He loved everything about living on the West Coast, especially the Mexican food. <laughs> he always had a camera handy, taking money photographs of the theme parks, the birthday parties, swimming lessons with the kids, so on and so forth. He was also a really big fan of the Sunday football games coming on TV at 9 a.m. Yet fate had other plans. In the fall of 1989, our family landed back in Plattsburgh. He joined several bowling leagues in the area. It wouldn't do justice to say that my father liked the bowl. He absolutely loved it. In fact, at one point in his life, he was bowling as many as eight leagues a week. So many memories and friendships were made in his bowling career that lasted throughout his life. He passed on his love of bowling to, to his kids, each one of us trying our hand at the game that he loved. When I finally rolled my first 300 game in lieu of a ring, I opted to receive a plaque. I presented it to him as a gift. For you see, our father had never bowled a sanctioned perfect game, never getting that ring or the plaque that he always wanted. When he read the plaque, he was so filled with pride, he cried for several minutes. And not because he never had a 300, but because he knew that he was the one that instilled the same passion for the game in me. As many of you know, we are a bit of a musical family. Our father was no exception. Music moved him. He was an avid Elvis and Frank Sinatra fan. And it wasn't just singing in the car while he was driving down the road. Oh no, our father loved singing karaoke. Over the years, he competed in many competitions and he loved the times when he could compete alongside his cousin, Bobby LePage and his friend, John Parati. Those were very fun times for him. When I think of passion, Nothing was more true than when our father etched his notch on the taxi business. He loved this career more than any other job he ever had. He was a true professional. His car was always exceptionally clean and smelling nice. 
his hair always freshly combed, and one of the whitest, cleanest smiles you ever saw in your life. He did all that for his customers. His knowledge of the ins and outs of this town are legendary. His exceptional memory of every street corner and traffic light would have led you to believe that he designed the entire city himself. And most often when he would receive a call, he knew the person's name and where they were going just simply from the customer giving him the pickup address. Over the years, our father had the opportunity to use his job to help others. And he did this as often as he could. He would help elderly and handicapped customers in their house with groceries. He used his connections to bring coffee and pastries to our family when we had a loved one in the hospital. He did that several times when I played Little League and the weather would turn very nasty. He knew just about everyone at every steward shop in town and he would convince them to fill up carafes full of hot chocolate for us. And every so often, he would bring home giant bags of food from Dunkin' Donuts that he traded for taxi fare when certain employees didn't have any money. As a child, I could not understand it. We didn't need the food. I said, Dad, why do you take muffins and donuts instead of the money? We don't need the extra food. He simply said, I love the smile it puts on Ma's face. Our father was an avid sports fan to the point that he was sitting in the waiting room of the hospital watching the New York Giants football game while my mother was in the early stages of labor with me. He was true blue all the way and he loved talking smack to Uncle Randy who was a lifelong Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> he also loved watching the Sunday NASCAR races. He was a die-hard Bill Elliott fan. But where his sports passion really shined through was with his beloved Boston Red Sox. He developed a love for the Sox from his Pepe Frank LePage. Pepe's two favorite teams were the Red Sox and whomever was playing against the Yankees. <laughs> and he passed on that same love to our father. When the Sox finally broke the World Series streak in 2004, I called Dad on the phone. He was so emotional, he couldn't barely get a word out. Yeah. And I swear to you, the moon literally had a red hue to it that night. I'll never forget that. Wow. Yeah. That week, he purchased a championship banner and he put it on Pepe LePage's headstone. Cool. Then came July 15th, 2010. Outside of his children being born, it was probably the greatest day of his life. My brother had surprised him for Father's Day with tickets to Fenway Park. Sweet. He was able to even go down on the field and take pictures in front of their iconic scoreboard. All the world's treasures couldn't buy the happiness that filled his heart and soul that day. Yet he was even more proud that he was there with his son by his side. Our father had a lot of passion, but he could be stubborn as a mule. <laughs> Hard-headed, he truly could be, especially when it came to himself and his own well-being. We could all tell stories of how we tried to talk some sense into him at one time or another. Yet, for as much as we all wanted to simply wring his neck sometimes, he would be there for us whenever we would call on him. And I am guaranteed that a lot of people sitting in this room and people who have been here and left today had their drunk butts taken home by him. As a young child, when Timmy John and I were living with June and Ralph, and he was working all the time, I didn't understand why he was never there for holidays. Countless Christmases, Thanksgivings, Easters, family barbecues, he was always working. When I would complain to him about it, he would tell me, I need to make sure that other people can be there with their loved ones on holidays. It wasn't until I grew up that I understood that message. There was a reason why he had such a large customer base. They didn't have any cars. Many of which were elderly and single parents who would use his taxi service on holidays. Otherwise, 
they would have to be all alone. He knew that we were in a loving environment with family members on holidays, and he would sacrifice being with us so others less fortunate could be with their loved ones. Our father had custody of both of his sons, which back in the 90s was unheard of. And while it didn't make any sense to me as a kid, I came to understand later in life that putting us in the care of June and Ralph was the best thing that he knew to do for us. It really was. And I wouldn't trade those years with my grandparents for anything. It made me the man that I am today and I have him to thank for that. After living with me down in the Capital District for a few years, our father made his way back home. He took up residence in the senior apartments just over here on Oak Street. On the very first day that we moved him in, he was seeing people he went to high school with. It was a perfect setup. He so enjoyed going down to the community room every morning in his building and making the coffee for everyone. Dad could also be found giving things to people in the building that he knew were in harder times than him. Whether it was cooking utensils, toilet paper, or one of his infamous QVC HSN shopping quests, he was always putting other people first, always. And he will be remembered by so many for his generosity. In closing, I want to thank all of you for being here and for making our father's life so special and meaningful. Dad. Dad, you will be missed greatly. We know that your presence will always be with us. Thank you for being an incredible example of passion and kindness and for loving us unconditionally. We hope that we have made you proud. And we all know without fail that when our time comes, you will be there to give us a ride home. <laughs> Thank you.